What is up everybody? It is Cameo Finance and I am back with another video. Um, today I'm going to be going in depth into Polychain Monsters. Uh, I made a list here. So I'm going to go briefly into what is Polychain Monsters, why I'm bullish, uh, lots of bullish signals. I'm going to go through all of those. Um, how to buy, how to sell, how to find a fair price to buy and sell your Polychain Monsters, as well as staking, which is why I think is uh, staking is going to be one of the biggest driving factors uh, in this ecosystem. So let's get right into it. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone for subscribing and watching the videos. Um, I just started this channel this week, and uh, you know I've already got 25 new subscribers, over a thousand views just this week. Um, so really excited to bring you guys the latest content, and hopefully bring you a video every single day. Um, so let's let's crack right into it. Let's close these tabs here. No need to look at that anymore. Um, so right here, off the bat, let's let's go ahead and uh, get started with some of these bullish signals. Um, chances are, if you're here, you kind of already know what Polychain Monsters is. It's a NFT uh, trading card game. We'll take a quick look at my portfolio here. Make sure I'm on the right wallet. Alright, so we can take a look at some of my NFTs here. In total, I've got 50 in my account. Um, if we take a closer look, you can see that the traits here, we have a background, a birthday, uh, booster ID, color, glitter, horn, etc. Um, the main definers here are going to be the breed, which is right here, baby unichick. Uh, the color, uh, the rarest colors are black, purple, and yellow. Uh, so those are going to be the colors that you're going to be looking for right off the bat. When you're opening a pack, you're going to be looking for the colors black, purple, or yellow uh, to know right away if you got something rare. Um, as far as the horn, uh, there's 10 different horns that you can get, and those have varying rarity as well. Um, the baby ones usually have a specific baby horn. Um, they can't really have other types at the moment, at least for the baby unichick. And yeah, so I'll go more into rarity a little bit later, but right now I just wanted to go over some bullish signals and why I'm really excited about this project. So, quick look at the price before we get started. $17.70. You can see we are breaking new recent all-time highs. Now, when the project did launch back here, um, it launched at a higher price, but uh, it dipped down, and it has been making an extremely strong recovery here. I would say August 8th, and that is probably when they started doing a lot of the announcements for the games. So let's, let's take a look at that, August 8th. So Polychain Monsters. August 8th. August 8th. Let's see what they posted on their Twitter on August 8th. Okay, so you can see on August 8th, they announced a, um, during this announcement, I believe that's when they announced the 25,000, um, they dropped some monster eggs on Binance NFT, and I bet that's what happened on August 8th. So a lot of people who were in the Binance NFT ecosystem, um, got a chance to get some rare polychain monsters in a $20 booster pack on Binance NFT. I actually do have one of the Binance Dragons. Um, unfortunately, it's not the rarest one. I've got the Yellow Flame, uh, the Binance Flame. There was only 20 of those in the world, so that will be the most rare. Um, anyways, uh, let's take a look at some of these headlines here. Um, so this one was just posted today. Polychain Monsters IDO 
causes 500% active user search. And if we take a look here at this little summation at the top, Polychain Monsters, a collection of animated digital NFT monsters, is seeing renewed interest amidst a surge in the popularity of NFT meets DeFi projects. The DAP, which operates on both Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum, is seeing a surge in unique active wallets and volume on its BSC Binance Smart Chain iteration. Presumably, users favor Binance Smart Chain as they look to circumnavigate gas fees involved with minting and buying on the Ethereum network. So right now, the meme that's going around on crypto Twitter is that Ethereum is for rich people. Um, OpenSea is for rich people. They're buying and selling these JPEGs. And just the transaction fee can be over $40. So you could be buying a $6 NFT, but be paying, you know, $30, $40 just for the transaction fee. Um, so that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's the same exact uh, coding standard. So the, uh, I believe it's uh, 721, ERC 721 is the protocol that is uh, for NFTs. And that works on both the Binance Smart Chain. Uh, Binance Smart Chain is an Ethereum compatible smart chain. It's just... Uh, a separate network and uh, it's just less congested uh, but right now basically being on the Binance Smart Chain you means that you can get the same NFTs it's the same code it's the all all NFTs are ERC 721 it's a it's a coding standard and so they're just as provably rare as NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain. So that's that's what people are going to start to learn. And some of these partnerships that have gone under the radar um, just really show how big the scope of this project is planning on being. So we've got a ton of users being onboarded right now. And uh, let's move on to the next partnership, Uniquely. Now, the the idea behind Uniquely is, let's see, Uniquely is one of the most innovative projects when it comes to NFT fractionalization, keyword, and integration of decentralized autonomous organizations. Um, so in essence, uh, Uniquely is a protocol to fractionalize and trade NFTs. The basic principle is that a collection of NFTs collection gets locked into the protocol and an ERC-20 token is issued. The holders of the ERC-20 token are entitled to vote with their shares if bids on the locked NFT should be accepted or get a share of the earnings generated through sales. So imagine someone builds up a collection of let's say 10,000 monsters instead of having to go and list all 10,000 of those monsters, they could put those together as a collection. Um, and then in turn, that collection can be bought, sold, uh, divided into shares. So you could sell shares of your collection where everybody would get, you know, commissions off of every sale of that project as it goes around. Um, so pretty interesting there. I think that this is going to tie a lot into this next announcement, which is Polychain Monsters partnered with Taker. Now these are older announcements. This one was June 28th. So these this isn't new. These are things that were announced that people I don't think are really grasping the gravity of yet. So what the Taker protocol is. We believe that NFT should go far beyond being just collectible. Since the very beginning, we have been working on new partnerships that would bring new utility to your beautiful Polychain monsters. Therefore, we are excited to announce this partnership with Taker Protocol. Taker Protocol is a lending platform that uses NFTs as collaterals. It equips your NFTs with DeFi tools that create a whole new level of liquidity, aiming to enhance the efficiency of asset transfers and enrich the application scenarios 
Taker builds cross-chain bridges that connect public chains such as Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot, Near, and Polygon. At the moment, the initial launch is planned for Ethereum and Polygon networks. And uh, they did announce on their Twitter that uh, Polychain Monsters on the Polygon network is coming this year uh, in the third quarter. Um, so that is something to, to keep an eye on. But essentially, this is going to really shove this into the DeFi space. Um, so those, if you go on OpenSea, some of these Polychain Monsters are selling upwards of $40,000 on average. Um, for some of the rarer ones. So to be able to take that and use it as collateral to take out a loan on PMON and then stake that PMON, that would be insane. Because you could just stake your collection within Polychain Monsters, borrow against your collection to get more PMON, you know, and uh, I think that the the more people that have their tokens locked up, the more collections that are locked up, it's going to drive up the price of PMON. It's going to drive up the price of the monsters themselves. And it's it's just going to be... I just think it's going to be really cool. Um, nobody's doing this right now. And it's just very high effort, very cool partnerships here. Um, so let's take a quick look at the Taker website here. So the app is still coming soon. NFT lending, cross-chain bridge. So this is a little highlight that they didn't really touch on so much, but you'll be able to eventually transfer these polychain monsters from Ethereum to Polkadot to Solana. Um, so this is going to be a really crazy experiment in cross-chain economics and how that works. But if you look at their BSC launch, they launched a token on the smart chain network and they launched a token on the Ethereum network, and both of them, the price is balancing out. Let's take a look at CoinGecko now. So, uh, I'm not sure if there's arbitragers in place, if they are the ones that are doing the arbitrage themselves, um, but usually, anytime there's a chance for arbitrage, people are going to do it, and that's what balances markets, um, especially with automated market makers and decentralized autonomous organizations. To be able to have those arbitragers go in and regulate the price in the different uh, ecosystems. Um, sorry, I'm looking at Pimon. Here we go. It is really useful. So you can see we're at 757 now, 1757. And we can see the markets that it's trading on down here. It's trading on PancakeSwap, which is on the Smart Chain network. And then we've got Uniswap V2, which is on the Ethereum network, of course. Uh, same thing with Sushi Swap. Uh, both of these are on the Ethereum network. Uh, you know, the daily volume is around half a million on Ethereum. And, you know, this project was launched on Ethereum. And in just the last couple of weeks, you know, we've far surpassed that volume here. Another huge uh, buy signal for me is right here. 922, let me just refresh this now. So this is SCV Finance. Yeah, so 926. So I was just looking at the site a few minutes ago, um, but three days ago, this was at less than 400 BNB trading volume. So in the last three days, uh, the trading volume for the month has nearly doubled and let's keep on moving on to more information um, so yeah layer 2 network DAO governance um, NFT lending so you can see looks like these are fractionalized projects that have already been done for clients like NBA Top Shot. Let's take a look at this. In Decentraland. So here is the introduction of their Thai token and base the basis of how their whole project works. So Thai is an interest bearing token. After lending out DAI, which is a stable coin, a lender can get the equal amount of Thai. 
However, as an ERC-20 token, Tai is not fiat tethered and only serves as a gateway for NFTs to enter the DeFi world. The price of Tai reflects the healthiness of the NFT marketplace in theory, I assume. Uh, multiple scenarios for the Tai circulation to incentivize lending and borrowing, a link between the DeFi world and the NFT world, essential to build a pool-based lending protocol. Pretty cool. So they're wanting to do NFT lending, so ERC721, that was the standard that I was talking about. At the base level, all NFTs are and should be ERC721s, or they are not real NFTs. Um, code is law, and that is why these things are so popular. Because if it's an ERC721, it's going to have qualities that show that it's provably rare, and things like that, depending on how it was put in and the white paper of the project. Uh, so cross-chain bridge, you can see they've already got the bridge built to Ethereum, Polygon, and Polkadot, with Solana and Nier being 50% complete based on this chart here. So that is the Taker protocol. That is an official partnership with uh, the Polychain monsters. Um, you can see here in Google Trends, uh, nothing, 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 nothing here. June 20th to the 26th, we had a little bit of a, a, a blip, and then July 4th, boom, we are at maximum interest right now in this moment. That is extremely bullish in my opinion. Um, you can see that Philippines, a lot of these play to earn games um, are extremely trendy in the Philippines, so the Philippines are going to be the first people to catch on to anything play to earn in my opinion. Um, that comes from Axie Infinity, a hugely popular game over there. So everybody over there is looking to find the next Axie Infinity. All right, moving on from there, Mooney NFT is their latest partnership. I'm not going to go too much into that. This is a Polychain Monsters video, um, but yes, this is their first IDO partnership that they kind of uh, do their like a Kickstarter incubator type of thing. And then here's some more price action, 17.78. And uh, looking here at PooCoin, um, I'm not sure how it kind of aggregates this information, but the way that the system is kind of pulling this token uh, based on how it pulls other tokens, it's only sensing a circulating supply of 889,097 tokens. Um, if we take a look at a hugely popular play to earn token that had less than a million supply, um, I would look at Crypto Blades when it was at its uh, peak of popularity. Now, they had a bad ecosystem, and I'm not trying to gauge a project based on Crypto Blades uh, because their reserve did run out. There may still be some hope for them in the future, but I personally do not think so. I think once the reserve is empty, it's empty, and at that point, you are. Venezuela and uh, your dollar is worth nothing. Um, anyways, 889,000 supply. Um, with the buy volume on Crypto Blades, they got their token up to about $170 at its peak. Um, so, seeing that we have a tokenomics with every single transaction, every single Pokemon booster opening or Polychain Monster booster opening. Uh, there is a token burn of about 20%. Um, a portion is added to liquidity as well. Um, so they have some really great tokenomics in order to ensure that there's always liquidity and to ensure that tokens are being burned and uh, that they're becoming less abundant. Um, so those are all going to be driving factors to the price. And the last reason I'm bullish is that me, I'm not into cute things. Um, I don't like to watch cutesy cartoons. Um, I don't watch, like, I don't play a lot of cute games or anything like that. Like, I'm a pretty, I'm not going to say, like, manly man, but I'm, like, I'm not into My Little Pony or anything like that. And when I first saw these things, I'm like, like, what are these, like, little My Little Ponies, like, why would I want to collect this? Um, but after buying my first pack, and the more I started checking out my collection, um, 
and the collector score. Uh, I guess this is one of the other things here. Uh, once they gamified it, um, let's see where is it Pokemon. So let's take a look at the staking here that's available on their website. So the most basic form of staking that's available to everyone right now is just the Pimon staking. Um, for a minimum of 10 Pimon, it's going to cost you 10, which at the current price is about $175. Um, then you can lock it up for a certain amount of time and you're going to get rewards that you can harvest every single day if you want to. So I harvested this yesterday morning at about 10 a.m. Um, so in a day I've made about 0.13 Pimon. Um, and that's all going to be based on how many packs people are buying and how many people are inside this reward pool and how much that they have staked. Um, so yesterday I actually made 0.25. Um, if we take a look at my wallet, we should be able to see it here. Okay, so it's not calculating the decimals properly. But I might be able to view it in pancake swap. Because this is a token that you really should only be buying like one at a time because it's a utility token. Um, but since you're mining, you can get fractions of it. Let's go to trade, exchange. This is how you can buy it if you just want to buy it outright, uh, the PMON token. Let's go to PMON. I may have actually spent it. Yeah, I, I turned it into BNB actually. Um, but yeah, I made about a quarter of a PMON yesterday. So let's say a quarter of $15 is $3.50. So $3.50 a day. Let's just round that up to like 100 bucks a month. You know, 30 days times 3, 90 and some change. So yeah, 100 bucks a month uh, from my staking amount. I staked this when it was $120. So that's ROI in about 40 days, which is absolutely insane. Um, I think that these rewards will improve. And then in the meantime, uh, and then at the end of your staking claim, like however, like I did 365 days on mine, because I don't really care. If I want to, I can sell the dragon. Um, when you do stake that minimum of 10 Pimon, you are going to get an NFT that represents your stake. And that's called a cold chain dragon. That's another thing that I can branch into. A cold chain dragon is something that you do not want to buy on the open marketplace because it is rarely listed under what it's valued at. So I can list this for 7 BNB, but anybody can go and make one of these right now for 170 bucks at the current market price. You just have to stake your PMON. Um, but even while this is up for sale, uh, I'm still going to be earning my rewards here that I can harvest. I'll just harvest these right now. It's going to cost about, you know, what is that, less than 10 cents. And this is the power of the smart chain uh, compared to Ethereum, at least until they get like optimistic roll-up and the London update is complete and all that um, with sharding. But right now, you know, using alternate chains that are Ethereum compatible, like Binance Smart Chain, uh, are a really viable option, especially for a project like this that has got such cross-chain technology. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you claim it. It's going to take just a little bit to, there we go, successfully harvested. So if you want to stake more, I can stake more. This is my cold chain dragon over here. Um, and so here's my 10 staked Pimon. And then yeah, with staking end date, it's going to be August 14th of next year. So August 14th, I'll be able to get my 10 staked Pimon back. By then, who knows, maybe it'll be $300 per token. Um, but yeah, definitely in the realm of possibility with these tokenomics and token burn. Um, and I haven't even gotten to the most bullish part. Let's go over to the Polychain Monsters Medium. And my favorite place to check out is this guy right here, Leonard Brandt. Um, he is the co-founder and CMO. Um, but he has a really great blog here where he goes over all the latest announcements. Um, this is their latest IDO partnership here. 
um, Lost Glitches partnership. Um, here we go. Welcome to Polymon World, the 3D multiplayer play to earn RPG. So I'm going to really go into depth here. Uh, if you're hanging in the video so far and you're liking this content, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, really helps the algorithm, really helps me out. And I'm having so much fun making these videos for you. Well, let's dive into this article and I'll show you why I'm so excited. Uh, so let's take, out, take a look at these pictures just real quick right here. So you can see it's fully 3D and it's pretty spot on compared to the NFTs and loading the dragons in there. It's got a pretty whimsical art style and uh, this is just in the alpha right now so these graphics could improve in the future but even just like that I think it would be really fun and amazing to take the, the polychain monsters that are inside my wallet and just take them fishing have them fish for me who knows even if they the fishes are worth three cents I don't care I'm um, gonna be awesome and uh, so they even have a a trailer I'm just gonna read this top bit here and I'll play the trailer for you so after introducing you to Polychain Islands, which is a second game planning to release soon, I'll go into that one as well, we're thrilled to announce our second play-to-earn blockchain game, Polymon World, a 100% community-driven 3D multiplayer RPG set in the Polyverse. Bringing gaming and blockchain together in a blend of off-chain gamification with all the on-chain benefits, Polymon World is a 3D multiplayer RPG game to fight, trade, and socialize with your Polymon and other players. Players will work to improve their Polymon, so it looks like they're going to add a level up feature, through battle and by teaching them unique attacks. So they can learn skills, uh, kind of just like in Pokemon, they're not just going to start out uh, with all of the skills. You can learn them as you go along and customize, uh, I assume. Uh, as players improve their team, they will gain access to new zones depending on the level of their selected Polymon team. So let's take a look at this video here. Uh, hopefully this volume is alright, I don't want to blow your eardrums out. So. I'm just going to give my impressions here. It looks like there is going to be some sort of farming mechanic. Um, and I think that's going to go into the land ownership as well. Over here we have some battling. Uh, from what I've read they said it is going to be a phase based uh, rock paper scissors style of battle where you can choose different things like block, attack, or heavy attack. So light attack or heavy attack and block. And over here, uh, how I believe this is going to work is that people can own little plots of land or they can rent out areas on larger pieces of land. And for beginners, uh, you can have these little green tents. Um, these are going to be for the noobs. And then for people that are more experienced players or that may have earned new rankings and unlocked a better tent, you can have things like a cooking station, a trading post, and you can have a, a bigger tent to live in. I think this is going to be your house. This thing in front with the potions, I think that's going to be a trading stand. They did allude to an actual trading stand NFT that you will be able to buy and host your own NFT marketplace uh, within Polychain Worlds. So it looks like your, your, uh, your Polychain monsters can help you with different tasks, hopefully farming or fishing uh, in addition to battling. And here, taking a look at it, I'm wondering if this is the Cold Chain Dragon or the Bitcoin Unidragon here. Um, because if you could use your, your, your Cold Chain Dragon, the dragon that you obtain from staking to use in the game, um, I think that would be really special as well. So coming soon. They haven't announced any dates yet. Um, I've been following it very closely. Essentially what they tell everyone is that they don't want to use dates, they don't want to give deadlines, they want to release the game when it's ready. Uh, but they do say that it is coming soon. And uh, yeah, let's go a little bit deeper into this. Community Driven Gaming. Next to Polychain Islands, Polymon World is one of the games we've had in mind when we promised to bring utility to all of your collected Polymon in our roadmap announcement back in April. Development of Polymon World kicked off back in April when we announced our partnership with Morales and our involvement in the accompanying Morales Web 3 Hackathon. 
part here is a quote from Leif Eric Leiser, CEO of Polychain Monsters. Partnering with Morales for the Morales Hackathon allows us to directly help encourage the developer community to create tomorrow's unique, innovative dApps. What's more, our involvement can invigorate developers to build great projects for the broader Polychain Monsters ecosystem, both during the hackathon and long after. While Polymon World started out as a hackathon project worked on by just one highly talented and professional community member, it is now backed by its own game development studio, Nifty Games. Polymon World will enable you to bring your entire Polychain Monsters collection into a beautifully detailed 3D world, letting you battle, quest, trade, and socialize with the Polymon community. So I think that's going to be a lot like, you know, Maple Story, RuneScape. There's going to be these commons, uh, common areas, or like World of Warcraft, where people just kind of hang out in the city hub, and just kind of ha and uh, trade and battle and socialize. Uh, Turn-based battling, strategic rock paper scissors like design with more choice complexity. A battle between two players happens over several attack phases. In each attack phase, a Polymon can perform several actions like light attacks heavy attacks, or a block. Quests and socializing. Master daily and weekly challenges. Complete the main story and do several side quests while socializing with your friends. Uh, so it looks like we're going to have a few little cosmetic things that you can do. Trading and trade stands. So trade Polymon and eventually additional in-game NFT items with others, or get your hands on one of the trade stand NFTs that I was talking about, allowing you to create your own in-game NFT marketplace. I, I assume that you'll be able to get commissions based on sales in your marketplace, and I assume more people will visit your market if you have a good piece of land in a good area that's close to the central hub where people spawn in. So that's going to make those things sought after. Developing a game following the play-to-earn model comes with a lot of challenges. Most importantly, it needs to be sustainable, even without thousands of new players joining it every month. This was why Crypto Blades failed, is because it needed that constant, constant um, new players. Whereas this one, I think that it can bring in a lot of players and then nurture those players uh, in order to create a sustainable environment. In Pokemon World, players will win tokens by competing against others in battles and tournaments. So these tokens will eventually be used to purchase in-game NFTs and to alter your Polymon's appearance. So, looks like you're going to be competing for these tokens. You can use those tokens to buy in-game NFTs, which you can then sell on the secondary marketplaces. Uh, bringing gaming and blockchain together in a blend of off-chain gamification with all the on-chain benefits. Polymon World is a 3D multiplayer RPG game. Okay, so we've already read that. Let's take a look at the Polychain Islands. So this one is going to be a 2D type of game. That looks like it's going to be pretty passive for the most part if you want it to be. Um, but this looks like something that's really cool that you could just log into mobile and it's going to have a really nice mobile experience in my opinion. Um, if you zoom in, look like you can like tap on these little crops to harvest them. And, you know, we've all seen games like that, kind of more like uh, Clash of Clans. Um, but yeah, let's take a look here. Our vision for Polychain Islands is to create a place for our community to play, work, socialize, and start meaningful projects together. Through hundreds of thoughtful discussions with experts in the gaming industry during the past few months, we learned that the foundation for the game we envisioned is a well-balanced, sustainable, and entertaining gamified economy, enabling our community to own the game and benefit from becoming a valuable part of it, both financially and emotionally. Lead us to conclude that we want to implement a play-to-earn model early on. Developing a game following the play-to-earn model, however, comes with a lot of challenges. Most importantly, it needs to be sustainable even without thousands of new players joining it every month. Thus, finding other value-creating mechanisms besides growth is the key to long-lasting success. We are aware of these challenges and have already established ways to bring additional value from the outside through the upcoming booster incubations and partnerships. As many of you have already learned in our recent AMAs, Polychain Islands is one of only two gaming initiatives that we've started. 
I did talk about the other one already. While we will announce more details about the second game soon, we want to highlight that we partner with highly skilled game development experts to bring our vision to life. In the case of Polychain Islands, we are teaming up with a well-established game development company from Germany that excels at creating a complex but well-balanced gamified economy. But now, let's head into the details about Polychain Islands. In this game, you will need to team up with your allies to protect the Polychain Islands from a powerful and nearing threat. Train your team and collect all new powerful Polychain monsters to prepare for the upcoming battles and tournaments. Next to fighting battles, you will be able to participate in the local economy by farming resources, constructing buildings, and starting companies. In addition to these engaging play-to-earn gameplay mechanics, you will have the possibility to participate in exciting new IDOs and create your own polyverse as a home for your polymon. Participating in the thriving economy of the Polychain Islands will enable you to strengthen your polymon for the upcoming battles. By buying land, you can build production facilities and harvest resources with the help of your polymon, then make use of those resources to produce goods in factories or by selling them in your very own marketplace. You can also equip your polymon with items, enhancing their attributes in battles against the other trainers or improving their farming skills. Through fighting battles, you will earn Essence, a mystical resource found in the Polychain Islands. So what I think here, I'm just going to take a brief pause and tell you what I'm thinking, is that you can do your farming here, um, you can do um, a lot of quests and things here, and you're going to gain this Essence, and I think that Essence is going to be the same token that's used in the other game and everything is going to be cross-functional which is going to be really amazing that you're going to play this 2D game on your phone then you could go home maybe jump on your computer and play the 3D game on your PC um, so owning land by owning plots of land you are eligible to build factories and harvest resources with the help of your polymon you can also place polymon on other players land for farming resources giving a share of your earnings back to the owner. Very, very cool. You will be able to buy plots of land in the upcoming Polychain Island sale and through additional monthly sales as all non-fungible assets on the Polychain Islands, these plots are backed by an NFT providing secure ownership. So the plots of land will be NFTs. You're going to be farming NFTs. It's going to be awesome. Earning resources. You can make use of resources in multiple ways. Use them to level up your polymon, construct buildings, or combine them to brand new assets. With specific resources, you can even get access to Polymon Park, a place to catch all new polychain monsters. That's very exciting. Earn these resources through harvesting, earn by harvest, or through staking, earn by stake. All resources on the Polychain Islands are backed by EIP20 token, making them integrable to the whole DeFi ecosystem, like DEXs and wallets. So EIP20 for centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges, there are token standards um, for those different types of spot markets. Um, so there will be, the, uh, for Axie, there is the, you know, Axis token. And uh, I believe that this is going to be Essence, and that's what it's going to be called, probably ESS, and uh, yeah, that's going to be neat. Uh, battle and tournaments. Through fighting battles and winning tournaments, you will earn Essence, a mystical natural resource found on the Polychain Islands. Essence is the most sought-after commodity on these lands and can be used to access Polymon Park, to craft ultra-rare and valuable items and buildings, or to secure your place in exciting IDOs. Very, very cool. Looks like, oh, so I see this here, tournament in two hours. Very nice. And right here, the meta backpack. So the meta backpacks were released already uh, to a small group of people on the Binance NFT market. Anyone who got those monster eggs uh, did also receive a Binance special edition uh, meta backpack. Now, more meta backpacks will be available to everyone else. Um, it's just that those ones are limited edition. So, very cool. Um, I saw an article with the developers, and essentially what they were telling about the meta backpack 
is as an inhabitant of the polychain islands you're carrying the meta backpack while looking small from the outside the magic unfolding on the polychain islands creates a near infinite space within your backpack providing a secure place for all of your polymon within this protected place you can build your own town invite friends battle and trade resources so it looks like you can have land and all this stuff is going to be inside of your meta backpack and you can invite other people to come inside your backpack with you and uh, hang out. So that'll be interesting to see how that works out. Uh, so yeah, what have I covered so far? Anything else that I'm missing? Close that. Price is looking amazing. Let's close that. So yeah, if you want to trade them, you can connect on SCV Finance. This is the most popular um, NFT marketplace right now. I've got a video detailing how to use SCV Finance, so uh, check out my other videos. And thank you for tuning in. Again, thank you so much to everyone for liking, subscribing, uh, really making my dream come true here. Uh, always wanted to make videos for you guys. and. Finally decided to take the step and do it. So come on this adventure with me. I'm excited to have you here.